Here at MotorOne.com, we are big fans of the Audi brand, and the 2021 SQ5 Sportback is no exception to that rule. Sportback is a new addition to the Q5 family, bringing a slightly sportier coupe-like roofline without sacrificing much in the way of versatility. The Sportback is designed to do battle with the BMW X4 and Mercedes GLC Coupe, but the SQ5 itself has a few little tricks up its sleeve to set it apart from those competitors. Before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media so that we can keep on bringing you content like this. For 2021, every member of the Q5 family gets a revised front fascia with attractive, sharply styled headlights and a revised front bumper as well. Otherwise, it's business as usual, including a fantastic full-length shoulder line that runs from head to tail that does a very good job of hiding the clamshell hood shut line, cleaning up the styling just a little bit, especially compared to the slightly busy BMW X4. From the belt line down, the Sportback looks identical to any other member of the Q5 family, but the roof line looks fantastic. It's just a little bit sportier and a little bit more unique compared to the standard Q5, but at the same time, it doesn't really sacrifice much in the way of rear headroom or cargo space. In fact, with the rear seats up, there's more than enough space for a family of four to go on a weekend vacation. Around back, the SQ5 does get a slightly more attractive front bumper, but the closer you get, the worse it looks. And that's because these seemingly beautiful quad exhaust outlets are actually fake. There are plastic blockouts right here that mean the exhaust actually exits from underneath the rear bumper. That is such a missed opportunity because they look so good and it would be so fantastic if they were real. However, styling is but a small part of the SQ5 Sportback equation. Much more important is the three liter turbocharged V6 under the hood, making 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It routes power through an eight-speed automatic transmission to all four wheels, and this particular vehicle has a Quattro Sport rear differential that apportions torque side to side as appropriate. Adaptive dampers are standard, and this vehicle also features an optional four-corner air suspension. But honestly, those are all just words. What really matters is how this thing drives, so we need to slip behind the wheel and hit the road. The first thing you notice when you climb aboard is just how nice this interior is. The styling is a little bit dated, but you do have fantastic materials like genuine leather and leatherette on the dashboard and the door panels, which is great. Feels good under the hand as well. And then of course you have Audi virtual cockpit right in front of you and a very intuitive 12.3 inch MMI display. So you kind of just are very impressed with the level of detail that Audi has given this vehicle. Once you're done appreciating the interior, you set off and you toggle the drive select over to dynamic mode and you're immediately met with this fantastic burble coming from this adaptive sports exhaust in the back. It's really surprising in a vehicle in this class to have such an exuberant engine note but at the same time, it really kind of underscores what Audi's going for here. They really want it to be involving and engaging. Unfortunately, the emotional involvement kind of ends there. The steering is lifeless. The engine definitely makes great sounds and it's got plenty of power, but it doesn't do a lot to really pluck at your heartstrings beyond that. The suspension is grippy, but it's not terribly communicative. So you're not really emboldened to chuck it into a corner really hard. It just feels a little vanilla and sedate, which is at total odds with the way that it looks on the outside. And that's kind of a shame. At the same time, when you wanna just toddle around town like we're doing right now, the SQ5 is a fantastic companion. You put the drive select in comfort or auto and the suspension softens up just a little bit so you still have great body control without necessarily losing out any ride comfort. There's plenty of room for four passengers and in a pinch you could probably do five and it just feels comfortable and hushed, just like you'd expect an Audi to. And then when you need to leave traffic behind, you just put your throttle down and unleash all those horsepower, that exhaust comes alive, and you really get to experience the dual purpose nature of this vehicle. Honestly, the SQ5 might even be a little bit too comfortable, particularly since it's wearing that beautiful bright red S badge. I'd expect slightly more dynamic behavior from this vehicle, but at the same time, it does offer more than enough power and grip to kind of carry you through the turns without necessarily sacrificing much in the way of comfort. You definitely get a little bit more performance out of the BMW and Mercedes competition, but at the same time, Audi's always marched to the beat of its own drummer, and the SQ5 Sportback is just yet another example of that. There are a few other drawbacks when driving around in the city, for example, in either automatic or comfort mode, the throttle response is really, really sluggish, so you definitely want it in dynamic for that. But at the same time, dynamic mode comes along with kind of those stiffer suspenders, which means you need to go into individual mode to set the vehicle up how you want it. It's just a little bit more too complicated, and I wish there was kind of a more solid middle ground between dynamic and comfort. 
Additionally, the stop start isn't quite as seamless as you want it to be, particularly given this vehicle's mild hybrid architecture. For example, the engine actually shuts down while you're still rolling up to the stop, which means you can kind of catch it with its pants down, especially since all of a sudden you don't have as much forward momentum competing with your brakes and you kind of like lurch forward a little tiny bit. And then occasionally, you can kind of catch the system by surprise when you take your foot off the brake to move forward again and you're left with less propulsion than you're expecting, which means you floor the throttle, which means you lurch forward when the engine finally does come alive, and it's all just a little inelegant. Ultimately, you're mostly left with an impression of smoothness and stability when driving this vehicle. It's not quite as exuberant and emotional as some of its competitors, but that's not necessarily a bad thing when you kind of just want to build a luxury commuter SUV like this one. There's definitely a small dose of sportiness and plenty of power to go along with that red S badge on the back, but this isn't an avowedly exciting vehicle. Instead, it's just a very comfortable and capable luxury SUV that can handle the occasional twisty road. Sporty fastback SUVs live and die by their styling, and in that respect, I think the SQ5 is probably the best in its class. It doesn't drive quite as well as the BMW X4 M40i or the Mercedes-AMG GLC 43 Coupe, but at the same time, it doesn't require you to make a whole lot of sacrifice in terms of practicality, luggage space, or passenger room. In that respect, it might be an excellent option for people who need a dose of sportiness and style in their daily driven SUV.